It's all a story. You know what you must do. I want revenge. What have you done? History will paint you a villain grasping for power. And you're but one part in it. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. House the Dragon dropped a brand new season two, episode two trailer. There's a bunch of new footage, so we'll break it down. There's also some other footage from future episodes, too. So I'll try to point that out, like when we're talking about episode two scenes and scenes from other episodes. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Just starting at the beginning of the footage here. This is Rhaenyra grabbing what looks like a book at the library at Dragonstone. This is a big deal because it's a library full of Valyrian history that we don't see later in the timeline because after Robert's Rebellion, he basically got rid of everything Targaryen, everything, all the designs, all the banners, all the things connected with the Targaryen family. Although I'm sure some people stole things and bogarted it or just keeping it hidden in their castles, their keeps, wherever they live around the realm. Like guess what I stole from the Red Keep when it got sacked? Same thing would have happened to Dragonstone after Robert Baratheon was named king and gave it to Stannis Baratheon and he started living there with his family. Basically getting rid of all the really cool Valyrian history that they had there. Notice in the background of this scene too, like you get a better shot of the actual library. The skull in the background is not Balerion the Black Dread. I talked about this in one of my last videos. It's not quite big enough to be Balerion's. I think early theory is that it's actually Meraxes' skull just because of the circumstances of Meraxes' death in the War of Conquest. Balerion's skull is inside the Red Keep. Meraxes was the big white dragon ridden by Rhaenys, Aegon the Conqueror's sister wife, or one of his sister wives, for whom Princess Rhaenys on the show was actually named for. Meraxes and Rhaenys died a few years after the War of Conquest was finished during the First Dornish War. Basically, Aegon the Conqueror wanted to circle back around and try and conquer Dorne again because he didn't during the War of Conquest. During a battle at Hellholt down in the southern part of Dorne here, they were taken out by a scorpion. Meraxes fell, and there's a lot of conflicting accounts as to whether or not Rhaenys was crushed by Meraxes when they fell, or if she fell off while they were in the sky and she was crushed when she hit the ground. What wound up happening later during Aegon the Conqueror's life, even though Dorne had not been conquered yet during his lifetime, Meraxes' skull was eventually returned to Aegon. I think that's when he put it here. So the idea is that Meraxes, just in general, is very important to the history of the Targaryen family, the rise of the Targaryens, as well as a monument to his sister wife, Rhaenys, who died. Fun fact too, a lot of the younger dragons that you see on the show now come from dragon eggs of Meraxes and grandchildren Meraxes, because the whole idea is that enough time has gone by that you have dragons like Dreamfire, who came from one of Meraxes' eggs, who has laid a lot of the dragon eggs for the younger dragons, like the very young dragons that you see on the show now. There's a scene in one of the other trailers too with a bunch of dragon eggs being given to someone so not really clear where they're going to. I know there's a lot of questions about Daenerys' dragon eggs. There was actually a shot during one of the earlier trailers too with three dragon eggs. They're not Daenerys' dragon eggs because the colors aren't right but they want you to think of Daenerys' dragon eggs when you're looking at them because there's three. We know what you're doing House of the Dragon. Can't quite tell who these writers are and where they're going just because the quality is kind of potato and the footage is so dark. We get a bunch of prophecy and dragon dreams talk from Helena saying, it's all a story, you're but one part of it, you know what you must do. It sounds like she's telling one of the other greens part of her dragon dreams. Like it's very clear that the people around her don't really listen to her and think that she's just talking gibberish. The story she references is obviously a song of ice and fire, like the larger story leading to the long night, the white walkers, the night king, the prince who was promised, Jon Snow later in the timeline. But the way they cut the trailer in a kind of misleading way with Aegon scene saying he wants revenge for blood and cheese makes me think that this is actually a misdirect like they're two completely different scenes and Helena is telling her dragon dream to someone else from the Green Council like maybe Alicent. There's a brand new scene of Damon looking like he's crying himself to sleep or sulking in bed probably because of the fallout of blood and cheese and Rhaenyra being so pissed off at him because that's not what she wanted like I wanted Aemon's head I didn't want you to kill baby Jaehaerys he didn't do anything wrong. This basically causes a rift to develop between them. She says in the other trailers that she can't trust him anymore. Like he no longer has a say in what they're actually doing planning the impending war because Rhaenyra does not want war yet. The big problem with that is that she needs him very badly and his dragon Caraxes. Mostly needs his dragon but you kind of get the idea. 
they cut Helena's scene about the prophecy with the scene of Amond looking at the Iron Throne like he's in the throne room, both referencing Amond's part in all this, like the grand scheme of things, in the general Iron Throne itself, and how it's so central to the wars through history and this grand story. Because for the most part throughout history, all the wars are over the Iron Throne, even though the real problem is the White Walkers and the Night King. Everybody's worried about the wrong thing. Maybe they spent more time paying attention to what Helena was actually saying, they wouldn't be in this mess, which is a nice segue to our sponsor. Big thank you to Vessi Shoes for sponsoring this week's video. Keeping my feet nice and comfortable, that's why they're my go-to at the gym, doing errands, running from angry fans, going to the beach, when I'm pretending like I went on vacation, but secretly I'm still running around doing work. Seriously, I have not been on vacation in like 8 years, it's crazy. Their new Stormburst Low Top comes with an extra traction feature ensuring you're prepared for those unpredictable slushy surprises on your summer explorations, especially if you're running from the greens through the stormlands. They're the perfect shoe for walking on any surface because of its extra traction, muddy trails, or slippery sidewalks if you're walking through the north on your way to Castle Black, designed for any type of fun stuff you're doing this summer. They're built for everyday life, perfect in all weather, they're waterproof, incredibly comfortable, breathable, the fit is amazing, and they have sizes and styles for the entire family, and they look great. So make them your go-to shoes and upgrade your summer with Vessi's Stormburst Low Top. Discover more at Vessi.com slash emergency. Using my link or the code emergency, you can also get an extra 15% off your purchase at checkout. So be sure to check them out, and everyone have an awesome summer. During the next part of the trailer, Alice, it looks like she's freaking out inside this Green Council meeting as a result of the escalation. This could be episode two, could be episode three. Aegon wanting to declare war officially. Otto Hightower seems pissed at someone in the hallway here. Not clear who he's talking to. What have you done? It could be Aemond. It could be anybody on the Green Council because most of them get up to pretty crazy things as a result of blood and cheese. This is Damon at Hall after he's arrived. The whole idea is that both sides, the blacks and the greens, feel like Hall is the key to the Riverlands, and that's like a key area that they want to use to box the greens in if they cut off the support in the Riverlands. And because he's on the outs with Rhaenyra, he can't really do anything at Dragonstone, like he's just sitting around doing nothing. He wants to go to Hall where he can actually do something. There's also a bit of a subplot this season too with Rhaenyra suspecting that Daemon is trying to create his own army in the Riverlands separately from what she wants to do. Not that Daemon is trying to usurp her or anything like that, just that he is trying to start this war without her help. When she says history will paint you as a villain grasping for power, she could be talking to anyone, but it's probably, you know, early theory, her talking to Daemon, not the Greens, Aegon, Allison, or people that you might think. I think this is the two of them having that argument over the events of Blood and Cheese and the fact that he's so pissed off that they're just sitting around dragons so not doing anything. It's the same vibe with Aemond and the other members of the Green Council, like some of them really want war, particularly Aegon now and Kristen Cole, because Kristen Cole feels so guilty for getting it on with Allison when he should have been protecting Helena, and Aegon is just so pissed off he wants revenge. There's a scene of Kristen Cole getting ready to behead someone. It looks like it's near the bay. I think this is at Duskendale. This might be the sack of Duskendale in one of the early battles, but it might not happen till episode three. This is before the battle at Rook's Rest, though, and that's episode four, which is why I say this might be episode three. Zoom and enhance. Notice he's also got the chain of the Hand of the King, so Otto Hightower might be getting fired by Aegon as Hand of the King during episode two. There's a riot in King's Landing, that also might be episode two, because we see the scene of Helena and Alicent with their mourning veils on running from the crowd that looks like it's rioting. There's a couple reasons why the small folk are starting to get so pissed off. There's the blockades that Rhaenyra's side are doing on King's Landing, creating a food shortage. The Greens' side of the war effort is causing a lot of shortages in supplies, causing the small folk to be taxed very greatly as well, so things just in general in King's Landing are really terrible for the small folk right now, so they're getting super pissed off. There are a few new battle scenes of the dragon battles at Rook's Rest, that's episode 4. There's a new scene of Helena and Allison at Prince Jaehaerys' funeral procession through the city. Notice during episode 1, she was also knitting his funeral veil at the beginning of the episode because she'd seen his death in a dragon dream without really understanding the context, so she didn't know that it was about to happen later that night. That's also why she was talking about the rats. She was afraid of the rats, but they didn't understand what she meant, and Aegon just thought that she was being ridiculous. 
I'm also working on a separate video for Helena because they also revealed a bunch of behind the scenes for all the different drawings that she did around her room and one of them depicts Jon Snow and Daenerys so Helena has actually seen Jon Snow and Daenerys during the events of the main show. But the problem with Helena is that she's kind of like the internet in that she has all this information but there's no search bar, she doesn't know how to use it so she doesn't understand the context of all these visions that she's getting. We made a bunch of jokes about that during the original Game of Thrones series during season 7 when Bran became the Three-Eyed Raven. He was kind of like the internet in that he had the sum total of all information of everything that had ever happened in the world but he didn't know how to make sense of all the knowledge. So Bran was like the human version of Google and Samwell had to be the search bar to actually try and pick out specific pieces of information. All they need right now on House of the Dragon is someone to do that for Helena, just like become the search bar and search for specific things that she's seen in her visions. The main problem with that is that nobody around Helena listens to what she says. Even Allison, who loves her dearly, thinks that she's just a weird little kid, like go play with your bugs. If Viserys were still alive, he would probably listen to her because he was so tuned in to that kind of thing. There's a brand new scene of Jace in a new outfit inside what seems like the map table room. You can see the different figures on top of the map table as they're doing all their war planning. This is him outside with Bela teaching her how to use a crossbow. This looks like Otto Hightower getting into the fight with Aegon and Kristen Cole after Aegon demands they declare war. It might be before Aegon fires him. This is a new scene of Hugh Hammer and his wife at King's Landing. He's one of the dragon seas. Currently, he's just a blacksmith working at King's Landing, but part of the idea is that he's a Targaryen bastard. So he has enough Valyrian blood in his veins, thus the white hair, that he can actually ride a dragon. And I'm not sure what's going on with Lionel Strong here, just skulking in the hallways. Every time you see him, he's just always like quietly standing off in the corner watching people creepily, probably thinking about something feet related. It kind of seems like he's trying to orchestrate the firing of Otto Hightower, like he wants to get rid of Otto Hightower for some reason. We'll see what's going on there. But if there's any other Easter eggs or references that you spotted the new footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. And I'll try to finish that video about Helena seeing Jon Snow and Daenerys sometime in the next couple of days. She's got some crazy Easter eggs in those visions that they actually did up, which are canon now to the show because they literally did them for the show. It's just they show them in the background so they're not quite as clear, like you actually have to zoom and enhance on them. There's also a lot of cool backstory for Dannis the Dreamer that they actually did for the episodes too, so I'll try to do a video about that at some point as well. Turns out she was actually the very first writer for Valyrian the Black Dread during the time of the ancient Valyrian Freehold. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. My full episode 2 video will post Sunday night after they release it, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for that video. I'll update the link as soon as I post it, and click here for my full House the Dragon Season 2 Episode 1 video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next